guys, I'm Sarah. This is Adam, and today we're gonna give you a tour of his DIY Sprinter van. Sprinter 170 extended. Uh, it's a little over 24 feet long. What year is it? Uh, this is a 2013. Finding something with low miles was important to me. Uh, this one had 30,000 when I got it. You'll have to forgive us. We're right next to LAX, so there's probably going to be a lot of background noise in this video. So are you glad you went with this size? Do you ever have any trouble parking? After being in the van for a while, I really feel like I could go a lot smaller. Um, being a 170 extended, I can't put it in a parking spot. It's like a spot and a half. Uh, the only cheat was to back into stuff that have just the parking block because the back end will hang over it. But it really limits to where you can park. All right, let's check out the van. Starting in the front, something I thought was really important would be to have a swivel seat. Uh, the biggest thing, especially me being here by myself, I don't have to convert the bed. The bed can stay the bed. I have somewhere to sit, relax, hang out. I love it because you can kind of look outside, see what's going on. Um, and then I do actually have the window covers. I'll be perfectly honest, I don't use them very often. I really prefer the curtain. Just slide it across. Don't have to worry about anything. It's quick, it's easy. I can pull up to a spot, literally swivel around real fast and then pull the curtain out. I actually built a overhead shelf. Just be mindful when you get up, get out. You just had to have to step forward. Um, same thing when you twist around, I just kind of have to like worry about whacking my head on the corner. Um, surprisingly, it hasn't happened that much. I have an induction cooktop that I kind of put in the back. I like having the counter space. Um, it is one that I just plug in, put it on the counter, use it, wipe it, put it away. Um, I have a blanket, I have towels, I have the screen meshes for the doors, I have the front and the rear. The pride and joy for me is having a big shower with hot water. That doesn't look like a shower. <laughs> Most people don't think of it, but if you know, you know. I actually have a hanging rod in the shower, so it doubles as like a closet, toilet, um, it's a big space. I wanted to be comfortable when I shower. I'm 6'3", 200 pounds, I'm not a little guy, so it was really kind of like important for me to be comfortable. Um, all of this basically hangs out and I have a curtain rod over here so I can kind of slide everything out. How long does that take you? I'm um, just taking it out probably like a minute, one minute. Okay, so you'd Wait. say it's worth it to have all Abs that storage? Absolutely worth it. I mean, if you look in here, I really have, I have a nature's composting toilet. Um, I have all of my clothes, seven pairs of shoes, all my underwear, socks, jackets, t-shirts, dress shirts. And then when you shower, do you have like a door or a shower so curtain? So yeah, it's a pretty common one. Um, I don't ever do it with the clothes in it, but it's a Nautilus door. So it just slides over everything else. Oh. Is um, it self-drying? Like when you slide it back in or do you yep, have to Yep, so they open? are the self-drying. It kind of drains back to the bottom. When I built the shower, I actually cut this corner out on purpose. So when the shower doors close, it's actually sucking air out to keep the van drier. Um, if you take a really hot shower, you know, it could really get everything kind of wet. So this way I can close the door, turn the fan on high and it sucks everything out. Also doubles for me because I have this tube. I just made a little loop. So it just slides here. So it pulls all of the sinky air out. Um, it actually pops out really easy when I go to take a shower. I can literally just kind of pop this little angle, pull this guy out, pull this guy out, toss it up there. And then the toilet kind of pops out and I pull the clothes out. I'm 6'3"-ish with shoes on now. I can still stand, my head does touch but to have like a slight slouch is pretty easy. The big thing for me is the curvature of the van. So it really cuts in quite a bit. So I went with a really big shower pan. This is a 32 by 42, is big. Up here at the top, I can still stand sideways and be comfortable. I think it gives a better perspective with you in there. <laughs> this really is like a full house shower. So then kind of like going over to this side, this was actually a huge pain in the ass. The door ends up being a little bit too wide. So it's actually two pieces. So splitting these two together, leaving access for the lock. 
um, having obviously access for the door handle. I really kind of had to frame a lot out to make it work. Um, I chose to not really do that many windows. I like my privacy. I like being able to control the lights inside. Um, Havelock wool is also in here. It's also framed out. I also have the thermal barrier kind of cut through. I have a lagoon mount. The bed converts into a table. And then when that's converted, I can use this mount as well with the door open to kind of have a table like indoor, outdoor at the same time. I also have a 120 outlet down here on the bottom. Um, which has been great because if I got the door open, I want to use something. I don't have to jump in and out of the van. I have power right there. So moving on back, um, I actually really love the look of Butcher Block. I like that you can beat it up a little bit. I like that you can use it. I love the way it looks. I kind of did some custom cabinets. I really like the space. The van is huge, so I didn't really have to utilize the in the doorway area. I did kind of limit the kitchen area. I liked it pretty tight, pretty small. So I have the cabinets, you know, up here on this top side. On both sides, they're a little bit different. This one's a little bit bigger. This one's a little bit shorter to just to kind of give more room through. It's actually pretty close with the countertop. Um, I have an isotherm 12 volt fridge. I kind of wanted some drawers, kind of got some meal prep stuff, some utensils. Everyone's got to have a junk drawer. Um, the sink's a little bit bigger. I did a little bit different. I wanted something deep, just knowing how much stuff shakes in the van. Something can be in there and it's not going to just slide out. But the hot water just comes straight out of the water heater. I have a Bosch four gallon. Um, the shorter the line, the more water I can save. So it gets hot really fast. Once I flip it to the cold side, I have a second filter. So it actually gets filtered here for the drinking water out of the cold side. Um, this is the Bosch four gallon. And then it also plums into the wall for the shower. So keeping it as close to um, where it's going to be used uh, just makes it more efficient. Um, I also just found a small garbage can. It sits right here. It's really easy to get in and out of. That kind of covers this area. I do have a little bit of like an electrical box up here. I like to keep things neat and tidy. I don't want like buttons hanging out and stuff. It's definitely very usable, but I like the clean look. I have all Victron. So I have the inverter. I can turn it on and off right here. So it's really convenient. If I want to save electric, I can shut it off. But if I need all the outlets, all you do is click that little guy on. It'll make a little click. And then I have access to all the 120 outlets. Uh, this guy's really cool. It's just, all it really shows you is the voltage currently, but it's all Bluetooth. So everything's on an app. I'm like, man, how much current am I drawing? I can find out really quick. I can just open the app, look at it, and know exactly what's going on. Uh, this is gonna be an abnormally large bed and abnormally large shower for a van. But from here to the back is seven and a half feet. Um, side to side, it's five eight. So I can really get in and be comfortable and really like sprawl out. I don't have to be tight. I can really be comfortable. I can enjoy it. Um, the, the windows are even with the bed. So with the vent fan, when the air comes in, it's coming in straight across the bed. I originally wasn't going to do windows, but this is easily one of the smartest moves I've made and changed my mind and reconsidered. I was originally trying to go stealth. But really getting cross ventilation is one of the most important things in the van. These are about as far back as you can go. There's some body lines here that make the windows really not possible. Um, so what I do actually have is some 12 volt fans that can kind of sit in the back to kind of move the air forward as well. Um, but having the air literally flow right across the bed has been incredible. So what do you do for a workspace in here? This whole section pops up and makes a table. I can sleep in the back area and then have a full-time desk. Can you show me how you convert it? Absolutely, let's do it. I went with a big, big, big table because I also reinforced the crap out of it. So this is all extra three-quarter glued down so that I could put a bigger screw in. So I kind of keep it with this arm on it. And then this is the, the height arm. And then uh, you just kind of loosen these bad boys and you slide this thing off. And then this actually slides onto the mount. So this kind of goes up and down. It's really cool because the mount is actually fixed, but I have the adjustable height model. And then if you flip the table over, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on this side just to make it easier for me. You kind of see how it lays onto the hole. So you kind of like slide him down onto that. You can tighten him a little bit. So again, I, I said I made it a little bit high. I like it because I can move it around easy. So if I flip it around, 
it gives me more options. So now I have it, it's a little bit fur further out. I have that play and it can actually go and touch the wall. So it can go further that way. This is huge. You could fit like four people here. Everyone that was kind of the plan. I mean, I think the van's too big for just me. You know, I can scooch over. I could easily put two people on both sides. The table's pretty big. How often would you say you actually convert this? Because I feel like every time I see your van, it's like the whole bed. It's mostly the bed. I, I don't do this very much. I think it's cool to be able to sit down and have everything, but I'm one of those people that don't mind laying in bed. So I'll eat my food in bed. I will watch movies in bed. I will do everything. I mean, okay. it'd be cool. I think it's just different. You know, if you needed to have a real Zoom call, if you have a really professional job, to be able to have a computer set up to like actually be at a full-blown desk. But for me right now, that's not necessary. So what have you learned? What would you change? The one thing I really screwed up on, I didn't do a diesel heater. Um, they do the ones underneath the passenger seat. Okay. And there's been some times where I've caught some really cold weather. I <laughs> flew home to Florida for Thanksgiving and got back to Seattle and it was 25 yeah. degrees. Yeah, that was like when I met you in Washington. It was super cold. Pretty much then. So it's different. I'm young, healthy. I, I can put a couple blankets on. I can sleep in long johns. Yeah. I'll be okay. But long term, I think it's definitely something I would change. Um, Can you add it on if you wanted to? I could definitely just add it on. Okay. Um, being from Florida, I'm stupid. I thought AC was more important than heat, so I have AC, but I don't really have heat. Is it a 12 volt AC? No, so that's a Dometic um, 120. Um, so oh. another reason to need the inverter. I'm a fair weather person. I was planning on staying in the <laughs> like why you're in LA right now. 50 to 70 degree weather. So you said you can run your AC off the inverter. How many watts is your inverter and how big is your battery bank? I have a 3000 watt inverter. Okay. So I bought a soft start. Um, basically, instead of taking a, a super sharp high wattage pull, it kind of tapers it in. Um, and allows me to run an AC right now unplugged just off the batteries. I have 400 amp hours. It's not a lot for AC or heat. I can either add more batteries later or I can go to a park somewhere that has plug-ins and plug in and have unlimited power. Where do you keep your batteries and inverter and everything electrical? Everything's actually right under you right now. We Can, can you get this... to it from here? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Just slide this guy out of the way. I'll flip him around. This is flipped out. Yep, you just pull this guy out of here, just slide him out of the way, and it's actually all right here. So again, I kind of mentioned earlier, I like to have everything accessible from the inside. Um, this is also spaced out way more than I needed. I thought the airspace would be really important. This is really intense looking, not gonna lie. There's a lot going on. There is a lot. Yeah. Where's your water tank at? The water tank's actually in the back. Do you want me to show you? Yes. Please. Check it out. And I want to see your giant garage space. You got it. <laughs> Hi, Bugaboo. What'd you think of the van? Alright, let's check out the back. When I built the van, I just kind of left a lot of a lot of space. I didn't want everything to be super tight, super compact. I wanted, if I found something I really loved on the trip, I could buy it and I had somewhere to put it. Uh, I've got a wetsuit, got some booties. I've got another surfboard. It tucks in completely underneath. I do leave the bag in here full time. It slides all the way up and in, but I do just leave it in. And then that way, all I have to do when I want to surf, I can leave it completely in here and literally just pull it out, grab my wetsuit, close the doors and go surfing. So I have a complete longboard bag, or snowboard bag, excuse me. I have everything I need for snowboarding in here. So it's real easy if I'm gonna travel, all I gotta do is pull this out. I have my carry-on bag, I'm good to go. Always highly recommend get a little collapsible chair. Just so when you're hanging out, if you wanna go and kick it at the beach, you just have something easy to get to. Um, so this whole upper area is pretty much wide open. Um, it goes all the way through. And that's removable? It's removable. So really if I wanted to, I could pull this whole piece out and put it on the side put it down on the boards. So if I had something really huge that I wanted, or let's say I get a dog on the trip, I really have an option to have an animal. Looks like you did pick up a dog on the trip. Uh, this is yours. <laughs> Does not come with the van. <laughs> um, so when I first did the water, I... Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. For me, 
having a long hose was important because the van's huge. It's really hard to kind of get to um, like a spigot. Um, so sometimes it's great. I can literally just kind of pull up. For me, I just kind of grab the whole hose and just kind of yank it out. And then I can literally go to wherever I need to. So I have the 50 feet. This is just an inline filter I use pretty much exclusively. All you do is put it between uh, my hose and the water spigot. And all that does is get out any like hard minerals. Um, it's really nothing crazy. It's still not, I wouldn't say drinkable water, um, but I do have another filter under the sink. So it really gets filtered twice by the time I drink it. Another thing I built into the back of the van, um, it's pretty simple. I just have one of the short hoses, um, but I can literally just thread it on back here. Um, and then I literally have water. So it's great when I go surfing, um, I can have the board out, um, I can have the wetsuit out and it's super salty. All I have to do is hit the valve. I can rinse everything off back here. Uh, keeps the inside of the van a lot cleaner, a lot longer. Uh, my short power plugs over on the other side. So I can still do everything like an RV would. I have the AC and the heat. Um, I have induction cooktop. Uh, I have a microwave. I have everything and can feel like I live like a normal person if I do want to plug in. I just don't do that. Something else really cool while we're in here, um, I have a fishing some fishing rod. And once I pull that little piece out, all I have to do is kind of pull this guy out. It does have the abalone, it does have the aluminum rail seat, it has my friend Tim's name on it. I am from Florida, let me make that clear. <laughs> um, Florida man in the house. Um, got to actually go to the place, it's uh, I believe in Sanford, and pick out everything. It really ended up being a beautiful rod. Um, these are all titanium seats. It's pretty incredible. Wow, I never knew so much could go into a fishing rod. What else do you keep in that compartment? I actually have some screws, um, I have some wood, some tools, just in case anything happens, I have a way to fix it on the road. Um, I also have an impact gun, so if I get a flat tire, I can pull that out, make the change a little bit easier. Do you have to open the back doors in order to get to that area? No, actually I don't. So when I built the van, I wanted access to everything from the inside in case it was raining, nasty, cold out. So not this section right here, but a little further back, I have two doors on both sides that access everything from the top. So how big is your water tank? I wanted to go a little bit bigger, thinking I was planning to mostly boondock. So I actually went 40 gallons. Oh. I also kind of depended that on like how it would fit. Um, where I wanted it, um, and it fits really well for me. It's kind of tucked in out of the way. Do you have a gray tank too? I have a 15 gallon gray tank. Um, and then I have a something I highly recommend, a remote dump valve. So when you're in the van, you can just flip a switch and it dumps. For me, that only works because I, I'm not black water. So all it is is soap water um, from washing my hands in the shower. And I try to use um, biodegradable soaps so it's not like I'm dumping something nasty on the ground. So I just have, this is random storage, nothing too crazy. I have some disc golf. I have, these are all the straps from when I had the motorcycle on the back. And really I just have like a winter clothes tote. Um, and then I have a miscellaneous tote. So I got like rope, first aid kit, um, extension cords, really just kind of like odds and ends, just if I need it on the road. So when we built the rack, we actually left this open area, um, mostly so we could strap stuff to it. If I wanted to put the bicycle up here, I could. Um, and then we left this back open so I could still work out. We could still do um, pull-ups, potentially off the back. So it was just kind of um, another set of options, another set of uh, ways to be able to work out and not need anybody, not need to go to a gym. Um, obviously, I built the van with a shower, so I wouldn't have to go to the LA Fitness or Planet Fitness. For 
All right, so that wraps up Adam's Sprinter Van Tour. He did build this entire van himself. I'll put his social media in the description below where you can also follow his journey and message him if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow my van journey. All right, I'll see you guys next time.